This is probably the most important video I have made so far, and honestly, possibly the most important one I'll ever make. Why? Because this video kicks off the video series that will provide the penultimate answer to the most important questions that self-taught UI UX designers ask. Questions like, what am I supposed to do? How do I build a portfolio? How do I know when I'm ready? How do I ace the interview? I was thinking about those questions, and then I realized that the answer to all of them is the same. Learn and apply the UX design process. Once you can do that, I would say three times, I can confidently say that you are a UI UX designer. And this video series is going to explain how to do that. I am going to go through every step of the design process. We will talk about how each step fits with the whole process, why that step is important, what it entails, and most importantly, how to do it. I'm serious. Step by step, I will fully demonstrate it. Now, there are some methods I won't be covering because there are so many of them, but this series will be covering what you as a solo UI UX designer needs to do to get that experience and hopefully land a job. By the way, I am Blaze. Normally people do that at the beginning of the video, but I didn't want you to think that I was wasting your time. This video will start the series as an introduction to UI UX design and the UX design process. Here is what we'll be covering in this video. What is a UI UX designer? What is UI and what is UX? What is the UX design process? And more importantly, what is it not? And of course, the UX design process itself. So let's start with our first point. What is a UI UX designer? UI UX designers follow a philosophy and method that ensures that the target audience, known as users, come first. Do we design mobile apps and websites? Sure. But we can also branch out into improving physical products, improving software processes, or just everyday experiences. And why? Because the design method that we use and follow is extremely versatile and yet logically solid, the UX design process. Ultimately, we are problem solvers, but we solve problems for users. Now, unfortunately, UI and UX have become buzzwords. Even some companies put up job postings asking for UI UX designers when all they really want are graphic designers or coders, and they tell them, hey, think about the customer once in a while. It's unlikely that those companies will find success because they don't follow a user-first method. And they'll feel it when it hits their wallets and their competitors get the edge over them. UI UX designers are powerful breeds, to put it dramatically. But at the same time, the UX design method is the key to success. And UI UX designers, good UI UX designers, hold that key. And that's where I want to get you, or at the very least, get you started. Okay, so let's clear up the buzz and let's get to it. Our second point, what is UI and what is UX? UX stands for user experience and UI stands for user interface. The UX side of things generally refers to the user experience research and methods that we use to define users' needs. The UI side of things generally refers to the user interface design work that we do when we're putting our final solutions down visually and deciding on the final aesthetics and functionality. And it is usually the UX side of things that are missing from design pipelines. Essentially, UX is the brains and UI is the brawn. UX is the mind, UI is the muscle. So, which is better? Neither. They are like the two wings on a bird. You need both if you want to fly right. And that brings us to our next point. What is the UX process and what is it not? So we've mentioned a few times already, the UX design process is all about meeting users' needs. Let's talk for a second about what the UX design process is not. Number one, we are not letting users make design decisions. And number two, we are not asking users for their opinions. They are not designing the product. Their experience is designing the product. Allow me to explain. Let's say you're designing a vehicle. Now that's a lot of engineering, mechanical, and material know-how that's gone into it, right? So if a user tells you, eh, I don't like that windshield, you should change it. Are you going to change the windshield 
and possibly the entire structure of the vehicle? No, for several reasons. First off, that windshield was a big decision with plenty of science behind it. Second, the user is not an expert. And third, other users might like it. So that right there is not a substantial reason to make a change because opinions are not users' needs. Consider the other side. Let's say we did the research, we polled and surveyed our ideal audience, and we found that many of our typical users are elderly. Well, then we need to address their needs. So what we'll do is we'll make it easy to get in and out. Uh, we'll make sure that any important insignia or text is easy to read. And we'll make sure that they're able to get help both during the purchase process and after because we're concerned with meeting their needs rather than appealing to their opinions. We're willing to change the design, but how we do it is up to us. Hopefully I made the distinction clear, but we'll talk more about it in an upcoming video. So what is the UX design process then? It's a design process that starts first by understanding users' needs and then designing based on that criteria, as opposed to designing solely based on design trends or based on what some visionary designer thinks would be cool. Oh, don't worry, you'll design based on the newest trends. And oh yeah, there's plenty of room for your vision, but we're making sure that our users would actually want it before we start designing it. The reason we use this process is simple. It works. Assuming it's used correctly, it will ensure success on every single level. And at the center of the UX design method is the main goal, to meet users' needs. Please remember this. If you keep this single goal in mind, it will enable you to solve every problem you come across, both as new designers and long after you've become seasoned professionals. All right, I hope I haven't bored you to death yet. Now we're in the home stretch. So let's look at the design process. Now, I don't think anyone has ever set in stone what the official, official steps are. Some say it has five steps, some say six, some say seven. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is the content of those steps and the order in which you do them. And that tends to always be the same. The first step is empathize. This is where we gather user research and feedback to ascertain what our users' needs are. The second step is define. This is where we take that research, synthesize it, and make those needs clear. The third step is ideate. This is where we start generating ideas to make the connection between what users need and how we plan to meet them. The fourth step is prototype. This is where we visualize those ideas and solutions in a way that they can be tested or validated by users. The fifth step is test. This is where we test those ideas and validate them with users to make sure that they are indeed meeting their needs. And it's inside of this step that we go through a cycle of designing, testing, getting feedback from users, making changes, testing feedback over and over again. And that brings us then to the final step of the design process, implement. This is where we've made the final decision and we add it to the product. So those are the steps to the UX design process. In this video series, each step will have its own video, so there'll be plenty of time to explain it and demonstrate how to do it. And I encourage you, have three portfolio projects in mind and follow along with the videos. Right now, those projects just need to be ideas. We are going to start at the very beginning and follow that process all the way to the end. And in an effort to make explanations more clear, we'll be using a project from my portfolio as an example. I am aiming to make this series as helpful as possible. I'm also going to try and make these videos as short as I can, but I also realize that if they're too general, they won't be meeting your needs. So forgive me if some of them get lengthy, but I promise you they'll be worth it. So the next video in the series will cover the first step of the design process, empathize. I look forward to seeing you in that video. Until next time, I am Blaze, or at least that's what they always call me. See you soon.